This is a coconut. This is a coconut, except with leaves and roots. This is a coconut palm tree. So why do I bother showing you this anyway? Well, it's because the coconut is kind of unique in the fact that the roots and the stalk shoot out from the seed above ground. Typically when you plant a seed, you plant it under the dirt and all this happens and it's unobservable until the plant shoots out of the ground, but you never get to see this process happen. But I think understanding this and seeing it helps us understand what Jesus may be talking about when he's talking about the grain of wheat. Here's the text in question, John chapter 12, verse 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Then verse 25 and 26, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So what does Jesus mean when he says that unless a seed falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone? Well, I thought about that scientifically, and I thought when you put a seed into the ground, it doesn't technically die, does it? And it doesn't die once it's put into the ground. So what does Jesus mean? I think maybe what Jesus is getting at is not a scientific, literal understanding of the word to die there, but a symbolic one. You know, this seed has a form right now and a particular shape. And unless this seed is willing to give up this shape and this life, if you will, to be born into something new, it's just going to remain here, alone, wherever it falls off the tree. And that's where it'll stay until it decays, decomposes, gets turned into dust, some animal makes its home out of it, whatever. Jesus doesn't want the seed to remain alone forever. He wants it to bear fruit. And how does it do that? Well, it has to do something like this. In the case of the coconut, it's above ground, but it's symbolically dying to its old self and its old shape and its old form, and it has to submit to becoming something new. In a few weeks or a few months as this plant continues to grow, it's going to get so big that it's going to burst out of this outer shell and the roots are going to push down into the ground and the shell will be probably decomposed back into the soil. It's not going to look like this coconut that's here on the ground by itself. It's going to look different, but it's going to have new life, whereas this one won't. And Jesus' hope is that the seed will do what? It will bear fruit. Now the coconut, in a literal sense, will bear fruit if it submits to this process. So behind me you can see the base of the huge palm tree, and you'll notice the similarities between the roots on this palm tree and the roots coming out of this coconut right here. Now do you think, if I dug under this palm tree, that I'd be able to find something that looked like this? Well, probably not, right? It's, it's long gone. That tree had to die to this form, but look at what it's become. Side note, I just found the hermit crab kingdom. Yoo-hoo, anybody home? I think Jesus is giving the same picture, except with a plant that's a little bit more familiar with people in first century Palestine, wheat. Think about a grain of wheat. It's pretty unimpressive, right? Little small, light tan thing, no significance. If it remains outside of the ground, it's just gonna remain the way that it is until it decomposes or something eats it. But if it's planted, it can become this beautiful stalk of wheat. Uh, not only can it be beautiful itself, but it can also bear fruit, other grains of wheat for the benefit of all kinds of people. So what's the point? Now that we understand the physical meaning of Jesus' words, what spiritual application is he making? Well, I think the answer is that he's giving us a picture of what he is going to do for the world and what he's asking his followers to do in return. Jesus was going to lay down his life so that we could be children of God. He was going to die so that 
he could bear fruit, we could reap the benefit of what he had done. And Jesus then asked his followers to do the same thing, to lay down their lives, to give up loving this world. We have to be willing to die to ourselves to allow God to make us something greater, to surrender our identity to him so he can make something of us, so he can take us from a seed destined to decompose to an agent of new life.